Later at NC State, and now in his first season as the Mountaineers head coach, just 36 years old. Mac Brown across the way, 68 years old, and their two teams collide today. App State won the toss and elected to defer, and here we go. Michael Carter on the return. Carter to the 30, breaks away. Carter up the sideline. An entourage of blockers and finally goes down just shy of the 20. Michael Carter on the return of 74 yards for North Carolina. Caden Smith made the tackle. Well, calling for a better start early. This is a team that has started so slow in their first three games. Come from behind in the first two. And the last one, they almost come back and have a chance to win it against Wake. And Michael Carter, if it has anything to do with him, they're going to get started on fire right out of the gate. Michael Carter has Sam Howell, the true freshman quarterback, and his offense in beautiful field position just outside the 20 of App State. The throw over the middle, it's complete, and to the end zone! North Carolina to Daz Newsom, 21 yards and a score! Well, Tom, it was Daz Newsom who caught the game winner against the Miami Hurricanes. That one was late, and this one was about as early as you can get. Nice route, nice throw and catch, an easy set. Noah Ruggles has the extra point. Daz Newsom has his second TD grab of the season. For Sam Howell, his seventh touchdown pass of the year, 21 yards. The drive lasted one play and 17 seconds. And immediately, all the excitement, all the happiness for the guys in blue, it's, it's guys scratching their heads there for Appalachian State. This remembers the number four scoring defense in the nation last year. They hang their hats on defense, on toughness. Well, right now they're struggling, and it's playing sound football. It, they, they haven't been doing that. 41 points given up to Charlotte, 526 yards two weeks ago, and this is coming out of the bye week, and it's a senior here in Desmond Franklin who just takes the wrong angle angles tackles the fundamentals have really hurt this defense so far and Carolina striking first and making some noise here on the sold out Keenan Daz Newsom with his 14th catch of the season and that leads the team and his second receiving TD North Carolina after that 75 yard return by Michael Carter on the opening kickoff Evans, the deep man. This is a short kick, wobbling out of bounds near the 15 and a flag out. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team number 90. The ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Jason Autry is our referee today. Larry Malum, our replay official. And we get our first look at Appalachian State out of the Sun Belt Conference. In fact, they have won that conference three straight years. They are 2-0 and and coming off the bye week, as James mentioned, with Zach Thomas at quarterback. Well, he's a good one. Out of Trustville, Alabama, and just as, as strong and tough as can be. 12-1 and as a starter. 6-1, 210. He's, he's physical. He can tuck it and go. Takes care of that football. It's going to be a short gain for Evans on first down. And you'll recall, James, in that game a couple of weeks ago, Evans broke off a run of 87 yards on the first play from scrimmage in that game to score for Appalachian State. Well, going into the bye week, he was number two in the nation at 333 yards on the season. On 33 carries through those first two games. And Ask Eli Drinkwitz how good is he, as good as anybody he's ever been around. And a lot of people know how good they've been in Raleigh the last few years at running back. To the air for App State, the Thomas Hennigan, Dominique Ross made the tackle. How about these starters there for the Mountaineers? Up front, an offensive line, four of five starters returning from a top 25 team in the nation, both rushing and sacks allowed last year. Victor Johnson, the big tackle. There's Darrington Evans, highlighted the great running back for App State. Jalen Virgil is an outstanding wide receiver outside. Here's a big third down and five. 
At best of the Sun Belt on third down, 52%. And they've got another one into North Carolina territory. And it was Corey Sutton adjusted into that football. He got 12 yards in the first action that he has seen this season. Right, missed the first two games. The Kansas State transfer due to suspension. We asked Eli Drinkwitz yesterday, how is he? He said, well, he hasn't played, so he's rusty. You know what? That's, that's pretty good for being rusty, to go back across your body and to pull that one back in, secure it, and to move those chains. A huge catch. Thomas is going deep. And it is a catch. Thomas Hannigan against Greg Ross down at the 11-yard line. How many times did we see this against Wake Forest? Carolina defensive backs being in position, but just getting out jumped, just getting out physical for that football. It happens early in this game, too. That previous play was 35 yards on the catch by Hannigan, the leading receiver, with his 11th catch of the season. Evans on the run on the, the most recent play for Appalachian State. And how about the answer from Coach Drinkwood's team after North Carolina took one play to score? Absolutely, but they know they've got to finish. They cannot settle for field goals. It's so big that they've marched down the field, but they've got to punch it in and answer. Little flip toss forward. Williams cut down inside the five-yard line. Miles Wolfolk was there. Five yards. Officially, it's going to be a pass. As Thomas flipped that one forward to Malik Williams. Wolfolk, they call him Wolf, and he's hunting it down there to make the big stop. Now there's a third down and short. Early drama. They're making some noise here. App can get a first down near the two-yard line. Thomas will roll it. Look into the end zone and pressure, and he goes down. Thomas going down. Dominic Ross in pursuit and a loss of 10. Just like offensive coordinators try to confuse, that's exactly what's going on with the defensive calls. Jay Bateman and company on the defensive side, the defensive coordinator, he likes to get him in third down situations and move guys around, and that time is Dominique Ross taking advantage, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. 31-yard attempt for Chandler Staten, just his second attempt of the season. He missed one against Charlotte from 31 yards away. And Staten has Appalachian State on the board with his first day field goal of the season. So North Carolina came up with the defensive play. Just three for the Mountaineers here in the first quarter. Here in the first quarter with 11.06 to go. We had some fireworks before the game, and once we kicked it off, more fireworks, James Bates. Now how about the cut there by Michael Carter? Three great backs here for North Carolina. Matt Brown's offense getting down there early, and it took one play offensively to put it in the end zone. Daz, Daz Newsom. And how about this great catch? After the catch from Zach Thomas to Corey Sutton to move the chains, then it's Thomas Hennigan, the junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina, to get him down close. But Carolina with the big sack by Dominic Ross stands and holds App State to only three. So it's seven to three. And <laughs> yeah. Fourth of July around here. No wonder it's a sellout. Everybody's fired up. September 21st, exactly 79 years since these two teams played back in 1940. It's a very short kick this time. They kept it away from Carter. Six yards on a return up near the 35-yard line. Garrett Walston made the return for North Carolina. He looks as surprised as anybody that he got that football. But you know what? He didn't fair catch it. A lot of times those guys there, there in the middle. They tuck it and go. Here's a look at that 2018 North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. The guy who well, around this time last year thought he was heading to Tallahassee to play for the Florida State Seminoles. But when Mac Brown, Phil Longo came to town, he changed all that around. A hometown kid. It's Michael Carter, the junior from Navarre, Florida. Noel Cook on the stop. Six yards on the run from Carter. Boy, very interesting, the, the shuffling around. Lindsey told you about the injuries at the top. And Brian Anderson, the center. It's got to be big today. 
Carter runs into a couple of App State defenders in Franklin and Fair. They combine on the stop, and it's quickly third down. How about the skill guys there from North Carolina? Carl Tucker mentioned him, the tight end. And Deami Brown is a good one outside. We've seen Daz Newsom already, and Antoine Green trying to get back out there. North Carolina just 21% on third down. They're going to try to run this one. They switched it up at quarterback to Jace Ruder. And that play was well diagnosed by the App State defense. And it appeared that Ruder came up a little slowly as well, favoring that left leg. Well, he's having a really tough time coming off the field. Remember, late in the second half, or first half, rather, in the loss to Wake Forest, they had to go to Reuter just to get something going. Didn't have any first downs with Sam Howell. And here's another look at it. App State ready for the quarterback who's more of a runner. And a nice three and out here for the Mountain Air defense. Kiernan to punt. Thomas Hennigan, the deep man, wants the fair catch and comes up and meets that football. Just way over his head into the end zone. 58 yards to Jerry Moore. Sparky Woods currently on Mac Brown staff here at North Carolina. And back in 1983 for one season, Mac Brown was the head coach at Appalachian State. He knows all about these two programs. Still owns a home in the Boone area, in the western mountains of the state. And what a change for Coach Mac Brown. A year ago, he said he was trying to help out Appalachian State with some fundraising. Now he finds himself coaching against them on the North Carolina sideline. And when he was out of it, he actually said, who the heck scheduled that one? How'd you guys get App State? <laughs> Knowing how tough it was. And look, here you go, a few months later, and he's the new head man. Lots of energy back here in Chapel Hill. If he gets that win today, ties Dick Crum for the lead in all-time victories for a head coach at North Carolina. He was so gracious with his time yesterday, talking to myself and James and Lindsay and our fine production staff, producer Eric Kendall, director Ronnie Dale, and what a great conversation with Coach Mac Brown, who has a new appreciation for what we do as well, James. And you can tell, taking care of us all the way through. Can his defense take care of App State one more time here on third down? It's a third down and four. It was a big sack by Ross down near the goal line. Thomas Hennigan, 30-yard line. And beyond it for a first down as D.J. Ford made the play for North Carolina, but they got six, and the sticks are moving for Appalachian State. Well, one thing you turn on the tape on number five, Hennigan, I've got written down on my notes, he has good hands, and he'll go up and get it. He does that right here. Two big third downs already in this first quarter, and both times, Hennigan and Sutton, just going and fighting and make it, making it matter. You know, a sense of urgency. We haven't always seen that early in the, the year. In our first two games, we've seen a couple guys kind of lackadaisical going after that ball. Big first down here to move the chains and stay on the field. Three catches already in the game for Hannigan. Pressure came from the backside. This is a floater, and it hits the turf. Miles Dorn, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, had a chance at an interception. Looking for Evans down the field. Boy, lucky that they'll get this one back here for the Mountaineers. And Smith took a hit down low. And Dorn goes up and high points. It would have been interception number six for his career. But he can't do it. Also, UNC, that new rule, they protect those legs. you got to be careful when he's throwing. Thomas has to go through the progression. Slides up beyond the 35-yard line. They will mark him right at the 35. Tyrone Hopper. Made sure he went no further than three yards. Well, here's the last play. And talking about all these new rules. See that down low. When their quarterback's throwing the football, they, they make sure they try to protect them. And sliding as well, you got to be careful when they give themselves up. No flag, no harm done. And it's third down and seven now. A little bit longer to stay out there. Now that pass play was his first incompletion of the game for Thomas. Standing tall in the pocket. Has to run away. Makes a cut at the 40. First down and more. Zach Thomas has a block down the sideline. And Thomas is inside the 15. They'll mark him out right near the 16-yard line. Miles Dorn took him out of bounds. 
The rush was there. They let him slip out. They get the pressure. Nice push up front. And then how about this? Zach Thomas making something happen. Then I was about to say, hey, how about the coverage in the secondary? But they're all focused on the receivers. Thomas tucks it and goes to first down and a whole lot more. A 50-yard run for Zach Thomas. And they put that football right at the 15 of North Carolina. Seventh play of the drive coming up for App State. Longest run of the season for Zach Thomas. Play clock right down to a second for App State. Did they get it away? Flags are out. Penalty. First down. Boy, you get a team on their heels. You just you can't afford those little five-yard dinks. It's, it's the momentum as much as anything. So right there in the red zone for Appalachian State after they mark off the penalty. It's our CPI security red zone. And coming into this game for Appalachian State, they were 9 of 10 with nine touchdowns. Do have a field goal on the board from Chandler Staten of 31 yards. Confusion along the line and whistles. It's in the 12. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Well, we talked about fundamentals and how it hurt defensively. Eli Drinkwitz's team in the Charlotte game hurt him obviously on the opening drive by UNC, the one played the bad angles, and here comes some, some fundamentals coming off of a bye week, things like that. You're going down and getting a chance to go ahead. Instead, you're going backwards. First and 20. And dropped for a loss of one. Miles Dorn making the play against Darrington Evans. Here's a guy, just a great feel for the game. Watch him. You, you recognize it, step up there and make it. We watched, we watched yesterday, our producer, Eric Kendall, we sat there and watched tape. And I said to him, I said, you know, guys just, they, when, they, when they recognize it, they got to get up there. Where there's, where there's not a, a long ways to go, a lot of space for them to move. Incomplete pass here, but, but that's, that's exactly what you want as a defensive coordinator. That's exactly what you want as a defensive coach. Guys like Miles Dorn, you recognize, you get up there where it's in the junk of everything. You're out in space. You're out in space, and the, and the offensive guy has the big advantage. There's Jay Bateman, who coaches up that secondary, the Army defensive coordinator in the last few years. Boy, happy to have him here in town. And he'll give some offensive coordinators some fits with the different looks he gives. And now here's a third down and 21. And you got to think that App State might be a little bit safe here. They're going towards the end zone. Incomplete pass. Corey Sutton was running with Greg Ross, and they'll have an exchange of words post whistle. Ball underthrown, and nice job by Ross. See, he feels the body. You know what, that's, that's a good no flag right there. At first I thought maybe Ross was impeding him from being able to come back for that football. Good no flag and a good job with a little help from the penalties by that Carolina defense. 43-yard attempt now from Chandler Staten, who has already made once from 31 yards away. To put three more on the board for App State. And Staten is two for two here in the first quarter. 4.42 to go in the first. Tar Heels 7-6 against the Mountaineers. The founding of this university back in 1795. It is now time for our keys to the game. They are brought to you by your local Ford dealer, James Bates Hassan. Oh, the old well. Here are your keys to the game. Line it up, Appalachian State. Offensive line, defensive line. That's where it all starts. Defensive line especially. They have to be fundamentally sound at all times. All four quarters here today. And how about North Carolina? Michael Carter taking care of me from the giddy up. Yeah! Yeah, right out the gate, 75-yard kickoff return to set up the first touchdown of the game for Mac Brown's offense to Daz Newsom, and they did just that. But last time with the ball in their hands, they went three and out. Let's see if they can get anything going here. That was a 21-yard touchdown pass. And Howell to Newsom, and here's Carter. The return is 
much less than his first return of the game as Carter got popped and hit the turf. Ryan Huff made the play on special teams after a 17-yard return for Michael Carter. Player down for Appalachian State on that return. Zarian and Hayes. Hayes, number 30, the redshirt freshman from Dillon, South Carolina. There he is right there coming down, Tom. Clutching that left knee as Hayes is helped up by the training staff of Appalachian State. Head coach Eli Brinkwitz also checking on the redshirt freshman with his team, team trailing 7-6. Boy, what a perfect day for college football here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, late afternoon hours. Eli Drinkless, he, he admitted that he was a little bit worried that it's hot when you come down off the mountain. He, he said, you know, it's, it's nice and cool up there, but we came down and we got to make sure we stay hydrated. That was a big issue. Week one in his old team, Boise State, and late in the game, outlasted Florida State in the talkers' dehydration. Howell's pass is on target to Corrales. Up near the 30-yard line. That was the line he needed to gain for the first down. It's going to be enough for that first down of 10 yards. Our weather report brought to you by the North Myrtle Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau. You can see the sunshine here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, as Michael Carter carries it for just three yards. Early on, anyway. There you go. There's a look at it. Let's go to our weatherman, James Bates. Well, you see, not so much in here, Tom, but right in this area. I'd watch out for a, a strong Sam Howell to come freezing through. 86 degrees as we play in the first quarter. We're so glad that you're with us. Over the middle, it's incomplete. Off the fingertips of Rontavious Toe Groves, the junior from Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Desmond Franklin, a couple times there at that safety spot, you watch him on tape, and, he, and he's standing around flat-footed. Man, you be on those toes, you got a chance to get one of those tip balls. They got run by a couple times against Charlotte. But early on, they've shored things up there on the defensive front. They're in the front seven against this run. Here's a third down and seven. Howell looks to the right. The pressure comes from behind Howell, and the ball's on the turf. It's scooped up and running to the end zone for Appalachian State is Taylor. Demetrius Taylor made the play and the recovery and the return for the Appalachian State touchdown. Boy, they love him some Meach. Meach had a sack and a forced fumble against Charlotte. Here he adds to it. Comes, rips that ball out of there. The presence of mind to scoop it and score it. And the junior from Miami, Florida, takes it to the house, the former Northwestern Bull. One of the best programs in the land. Staten's got the extra point. 20 yards on the return by Demetrius Taylor. And a touchdown for App State and a 13-7 lead late in the first quarter. What? 48, here he is lined up right here. Nobody there for him. And he's the last guy on this defense. And I'm not just talking about the defensive line. I'm talking about the defense. The last guy that you don't want to put a paw on because he's fast. Even though he's big at 280 pounds about, he can move very athletic. We had a long conversation with his defensive coordinator, Ted Roof, yesterday about what a great athlete, with the physical attributes that he has. And, you know, hey, a lot of those kids, man, down there at Miami Northwestern, they can run no matter what spot they play. There's Ted Roof with his hand on his forehead there. This gentleman right there, you know him, ACC football fan, spent a lot of time at Georgia Tech and then last year at NC State in Raleigh where Eli Drinkwitz, the head coach, was an offensive coordinator. And nobody there 
for his defensive end, Demetrius Taylor. James, you know the relationship between Drinkwitz and Ted Roof goes all the way back to 2010 at a national championship at Auburn. Roof was the defensive coordinator, and Drinkwitz was an assistant on that staff for Gene Chizik. 13-7 App State, and there will be no return. 3.39 to go in the first quarter. Sam Howell to face this App State defense, which came up with a huge play from Taylor on the 20-yard return for the touchdown just moments ago. That is 13 straight points from App State after North Carolina scored on a one-play drive. And here's a look at the guys up front, that three-man front. There's Taylor along with them, the starters. You've got Scott and you've got Dairo Suba. There's the linebackers, Cook, Fair, and Cobb. There's a middle linebacker who makes a lot of plays, although he gets pushed out of the way right there. Nice block up to that second level, and that's a problem that North Carolina has had, getting up to that second level with their offensive line. And right on cue, they get up there and they knock 59 out of the way. you got to hold your ground, and it's a nice, easy pickup for a first down by Javante Williams. Williams, who ran for 102 yards in the win against South Carolina to open the season in Charlotte for North Carolina. Gets the call once again. He got 11 on the previous play and two on this one. Akeem Davis Gaither makes the tackle. Jackson as well. Just to finish up, there's the secondary. Jolly Thomas Franklin and John Charles. Listed before the snap, and a flag is out as well. Flag on second and eight. Jason Autry, our referee. Illegal snap. Offense, number 68. Mm. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, this happened twice. Twice in the game against Wake Forest. And right off the top, Lindsey Rowley, she told you about the injuries that have gone through there. Polina was the starter. They had three guys that were taking reps in camp. Brian Anderson, the second string until he had to come in when Polino got hurt. And they've got to clean that up because it cost them a couple times against Wake. They'll swing it out left side and Williams. Just past the 35-yard line. There is no game. Josh Thomas is number seven in white to make the play. Thomas makes the drop, but Akeem Davis Gaither, he makes it happen. Watch him fight. Watch him fight to get outside here. Not going to take being blocked. He fights to just, just slow it up and force a big third down and 10 now. They got to get up to the 46-yard line to move those chains. 0 for 2 in the game on third down for North Carolina. They are last in the conference on third down conversions, and they're not going to get this one. Maybe a yard and a half for Howell. Nowhere to throw it. It's fourth down. How about Cook and Taylor making the play on Sam Howell? Uh, talking about the, the keys to the game, line it up defensively, line it up, play fundamentally sound football, which at times was non-existent against Charlotte. And they've done a great job, not only against the run, but in their path, uh, pass lanes as well. Another fine job to get off the field and force the punt. Kiernan will punt. Hennigan is the deep man. Kiernan, the freshman from Dublin, Ireland. Hennigan this time does make the fair catch up near the 21 or 22-yard line. 42 yards on that punt. And now a quick word from Works. The Works Tryback 3-in-1 easy switch from blow to vac is a game changer and a time saver. Your yard work champion. So with App State taking over possession, we go down to the sideline to check in with Lindsey Rowley. Thanks, Tom. Zach Thomas already having a big day, and I talked to him earlier this week on what he felt his biggest obstacle in his career was, and he said not touching the field for his first two years at App State. He said no one wants to watch from the sidelines, so it was really difficult, but he did say that it turns out playing behind Taylor Lamb was the best thing that ever could have happened, and he learned so much about being a good quarterback and a good teammate. 
All right, there's a pretty good teammate right there, Lindsay. Having some good backs, that'll always help out a little bit. It's Daytrick Harrington. Jock, they call him the running back, filling in for Darrington Evans. And Zach Thomas, after he did become the starter, well, he's done nothing but win football games, 12-1. Two of those wins belong to new head coach Eli Drinkwitz in this new system. Tom, Thomas was the Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Year a season ago for the MVP in their bowl victory at the New Orleans Bowl. This is Corey Sutton. Miles Dorn forced him out. Ten yards and a first down for Appalachian State. Well, two times Sutton's been targeted, and two times he's come up with a nice grab. Both have actually resulted in first downs. And the junior from right here in North Carolina, Mallard Creek High School, he hadn't played in a game since the bowl game at New Orleans Bowl, where Zach Thomas was the MVP. Thomas pass complete near the 40-yard line. At seven yards to Hennigan. Greg Ross on the tackle. And just a few seconds to go here in this first quarter. Hennigan hopping off a little bit. And here, first downs, second downs. That's how you have success on third downs. I mean, this has been a team that hasn't had a problem with third downs. It's been a defense that's been good against third. North Carolina struck first to take a 7-0 lead. The next 13 points all belong to App State. Couple of field goals and a big play defensively. From the late 40s here at North Carolina, twice the runner-up for the Heisman Trophy, and the yardage favors Appalachian State, and they've got the ball to start our second quarter. Evans will not get much, might lose a little bit. Loss of four for Evans. Tamon Fox on the tackle. Well, Darrington will have to leave the game with his lid coming off and watch this defensive line get up and run and string it out. An excellent job by everybody with a blue hat on to just stretch it, get off the spot, take them the wrong way. It was second down and five, and now it's time for guys like 55 to heat it up on a third down and medium, third and seven. Jason Strobridge in there defensively for North Carolina. Three for five on third down for App, but it's picked off. Right near midfield, Miles Wolfolk has the interception. Starts with the blitz. They're coming, there's the confusion and not getting picked up. The late wraparound by Fox to get there and pressure the quarterback. Thomas, we saw a drop from Dorn earlier. And his counterpart back there in the secondary on this overthrow, Wolfolk goes up and pulls it down. First interception thrown this season by Thomas. Third IMT for Wolfolk in his fifth of his career. Had those two interceptions late in the game against South Carolina to seal victory in Charlotte at Bank of America Stadium. That is Groves on the catch. Three yards for Rontavius Groves. Yeah, those two for Wolfolk against South Carolina were on back-to-back -back series. And that comeback win, what a fourth quarter, what a second half it was in that game for Sam Howell. Comes right back out slinging a pick up a three on first down. Scoring drives of 98 and 95 yards in that fourth quarter for the win against the Gamecocks. The first for Mac Brown in his second go-round. Howell gets away and buries that one in the turf. Deira Suba, 57, in white, black, and gold. And now it's third down, and Mac Brown's team has been unsuccessful in this situation, 0 for 3. Got to stay out. There's some fresh bodies in there. Nobody in a three-point stance and showing a blitz. Everybody up there as Sam Howe stepped to the ball defensively. Let's see if they back out of it now as it looks like the offense makes a change. Big play here. Offensively, they got to get something going. Howell deflected and intercepted. It's Demetrius Taylor again. Taylor had the TD return of the fumble in the first quarter, and now he's got the interception for Appalachian State. My goodness. He's got the touchdown with the sack, the big rip, the force fumble. Look at him refusing to get cut. Comes up, talk about athleticism, comes up and tips it to himself, and that's a bullet coming at you. It's 
over on the right side now watching. You know, you play against teams like Georgia Tech and you work so much on not getting cut, not getting cut. You got to go down. It's so hard for a big defensive lineman that's trying to rush full speed. It seems like it's easy to cut him because it's the last thing they expect. Taylor drops his hands, gets him up there, keeps him free, and tips it to himself. What a play. This is Sutton near the 20 yard line. Taylor, after that interception, took it back 19 yards for Appalachian State as they close in on the red zone once again. Sutton trying to turn that corner. And he gets knocked out of bounds near the six. Jeremiah Gimmel, Miles Dorn taking Sutton out of the play. Well, welcome back, number two. A good job protecting up front. Nice quick throw. Look at him blocking downfield. You make one guy miss. Sutton again out on the edge. Wolfolk out there to stop him. Here's another look at it. And how about, how about Sutton? The Kansas State transfer doing an excellent job of staying in bounds. UNC first drive offensively for Appalachian State. They held them to a field goal. Second down and goal. They want six right here and try to add to that lead. They're going to try to run it to the end zone and in. Darrington Evans takes it in for Coach Trinkwitz and the Mountaineers from five yards away. We're going to go for two here. Trinkwitz all over it as soon as they went in there. was shouting for him to stay out there. And you're seeing right here, Tom, how much it matters. How, when you can have an offensive line that grows together, that understands one another. Remember, four of these five starters return. Or, and he's going to call a timeout now because they're, they're not on top of it. So a timeout taken by Appalachian State. After the fifth rushing touchdown of the season by Darrington Evans. So we'll see what Coach Trickwitz decides to do. He's got the 19-7. He wanted to go for two, and subsequently a timeout was taken. Here's the touchdown again. Look at him up front. Got into it a little bit, Tom. But, you know, last week, there was an offensive line that, that had played that UNC went up against in Wake Forest. An offensive line that you could tell had played a lot of football together. On this offensive line, it's, it's four or five starters returning from last year's team. It's guys that, that, that know one another and, and, and each other's tendencies and, and just have been playing together for so long, and it, it, it means so much, and it's showing up early in this game. After further consultation, Appalachian State is at least setting up for an extra point in conventional fashion. Chandler State, 91, is out there for the Mountaineers. It was clear that Coach Drinkwitz wanted to go for two after the Darrington Evans touchdown, his fifth rushing TD of the season. So after all that, it's a simple extra point. So 20 unanswered from Appalachian State. Big plays, Tom, and remember, this is on the heels of UNC coming out the gate, taking it 75 yards on the opening kickoff and punching it right into the end zone on the next play, and they don't even flinch. They march right down the field, get a field goal first time, but then here comes the big bad, Demetrius Taylor, the Northwestern Bull. The sack force fumble, scoop and score, and he's not done yet. Same high school as Trick Daddy down in the bottom of Miami, Florida. Teddy Bridgewater, all kinds of greats have gone to school at Northwestern, and man, he may end up being the most famous of all, Big 48. There you saw the last touchdown, the, one of the better backs 
in college football, really. Another Floridian from New Smyrna Beach, former Barracuda, Darrington Evans. That interception for Taylor was the first of his career. 14 points off of turnovers in the game now for Appalachian State with Carter and Williams deep for North Carolina. And it's going to be Carter on the run. Already has a return of 75 yards in this game on the opening kickoff. He takes it beyond the 30. That return is 17 yards for Michael Carter. Four to go in the second quarter. North Carolina and freshman quarterback Sam Howell. Trying to put a charge into this sellout crowd here at Keenan Stadium. These tickets a hot commodity up on the mountain about 165 miles away and right here in Chapel Hill. Looking out of that shotgun for Howell. It's a handoff for Williams. Close to the 38-yard line for Javante Williams, the sophomore from Wallace, North Carolina. He got seven, and there is a player down for App State. That's 98, E.J. Scott, and a senior from Farmville, North Carolina. Again, E.J. Scott, 98 for App State. And in some discomfort off the, on the turf here. That's, what a shame. Here's, here's the injury right in the middle there, the nose tackle. Over team and it's it ends up being a high low and that's that's not that's not necessarily a, a chop block but that's why a chop block is a penalty I was trying to block somebody else and ran into him and what a shame because EJ Scott fought so hard to earn his scholarship he used to watch practice through the front fence just wanting to be a part of it EJ Scott being helped to his feet and a good sign walking off under his own strength Absolutely. So here's new offensive coordinator Phil Longo, obviously on the left, and his freshman quarterback Sam Howell out there. After throwing his first interception of the season for Demetrius Taylor, Let's see how he responds. Remember, in the second quarter, late in the second quarter, in that last game out, Friday night against Wake Forest, Longo sent Reeder in. Jace Reeder, who we've already seen in this game, is one snap though. He went hobbling off with. A bad wheel. Second and short for North Carolina. Javante Williams about two yards along that 40 yard line. George Blackstock, who just came in for EJ Scott, and falls from the tackle. Now third and short, and North Carolina has failed on third down in four opportunities in this game. And they came in last in the conference jams in third down conversion. You know the bigger bodies there at North Carolina, but some banged up bodies on the old line. Williams trying to submarine his way to the 41-yard line. Could be very close. Let's take a look. Nice shot right down the line. Let's see who takes the punch. Mac Brown said his guys were catching last week. There's some pitching and some catching. But what matters the most is... 25 who over there getting a well-deserved sip of water got the first down. Howell tosses it long near the 20-yard line and incomplete and just too far for Bo Corrales. Gene Charles back there defensively for App State. Well, nice job of, of recovering. He, he was beat because that cushion. That cushion had broken down and then some. Corrales was into the body of Jean Charles. And a good job to put his head down, not turn around and peek, knowing he's beaten, just get there and try to disrupt, get in the way, and he did just that to force a second and ten. Howell still has the football, running right down the middle of the field, sliding his way to the 40-yard line at 15 yards for Sam Howell. Now that's double good for number seven because he's had a tough time sliding. Just too valuable to this football team. It's a long season and a nice job. Nice play call. Nice read by Hal. But he slides. The damage is done. He's got the first down. Go ahead and take it down and don't take all these hits. I know you're young and resilient, but you got to be safe. We need you a long time, these coaches telling you. Michael Carter slams into the line and 
falls forward near the 43 yard line. Blackstock on the tackle. One or two. On the run from Michael Carter. Phil Longo spent the last two seasons as the offensive coordinator at Ole Miss. Howell tried to cut it upfield near the 40. Ran into Trey Cobb, number 45 in white and gold and black. And that's four yards on the run for Sam Howell. And we're right back at third down. Well, similar situation on that last conversion. Everybody with the black hats on went flying out of there. Everyone fired up, trying to go make a play, get the ball back. But everybody's, remember, we've got to stay sound. You've got to play fundamentally sound, and that's somebody's guy. You can't forget about Sam Howell on a misdirection, on a keeper by that quarterback. They need five here now. Already have converted on third down this drive. Howell over the middle near the 25-yard line. Looking for Corrales, and a flag is out. Sean Jolly, number three of the coverage. App State. To begin with, you're not going to see it, but a nice pickup by the back, Williams. Pass interference. Defense, number three. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Um, just a, li a little bit too much with the hands, I'm guessing. Couldn't see it so much from that angle. Let's see if we can see it right here. Seemed to be in pretty good position. That right hand on the hip. Man, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. So hard to cover those guys. A lot of times I, I see life through a, a linebacker defender's lens, and so I tend to go with the defender. And... And I'm sure Sean Jolly would agree that's a tough flag to throw on a defensive back trying to cover someone in space. But nonetheless, fresh set of downs here for the Heels. Howell throws on the run. That is complete near the 20-yard line to Toe Groves. And five yards on the play for North Carolina. Davis Gaither, the tackle for App State. Approaching nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Appalachian State with 20 straight points after North Carolina scored on its first drive of just a single play on a TD pass from Howell. They'll run it down close to about the 17-yard line. Couple of yards for Antonio Williams, a senior from New London, North Carolina. Got a transfer from Ohio State. Here with the hurry up. Mountaineers not quite all the way set. Howell incomplete to Groves. Trying to hit him on the run over the middle. Boy, well, Toe Groves, who had the huge 20-yard catch on 4th and 17 on that game-winning drive against Miami. He's got to hold on to that one right here. Here's a 4th down and 3. Howell in the offense staying out there. They're going for it. 5 of 6 on the season. On fourth down plays for North Carolina, they're going to call a timeout. This is the 11th play upcoming of this drive, and they want to discuss it a little bit further with head coach Mac Brown. 40-plus years on the sideline. He's seen it all. What will his choice be? Turf here at Keenan Stadium. Right now into the red zone for the first time in the game, but fourth down for North Carolina. They're going to go. They're going to try to run it and get it. Javante Williams battering his way inside the 15. He got four yards on the play. Four new downs for North Carolina. Wow, Williams just forward. These, these backs, they do such a good job of running with good pad level. Robert Gillespie, their running back coach, has done a fine job of, of them running with some power. When they make up their mind, they're going to put their foot in the ground and go north and south. They do just that. There's a nice pickup and a great job by the offensive line. Going to run it again with a spinning Michael Carter. Weaving his way inside the 10-yard line. Picking up that fourth down, James, for North Carolina. They are now 6 of 7 on the season when they go for it on fourth down. Yeah, that's one thing that Mac Brown told us yesterday. Is it, he, he's not scared so much of going for it on fourth down anymore. Fourth down, as he's, he's kind of floating around there in the, in the TV side of things, that he kind of likes the idea of going for it. Using all four downs, they did a good job there. 
13th play of the drive, a deflected pass, and it falls incomplete. And Taylor got a piece of that one. What kind of game is Demetrius Taylor playing right Boy, now? And they needed him there, Tom, because there was a receiver running in the paint. He was free all the way to the Argyle in the back of that end zone. Nice job. Look, again, the athleticism. Taylor not only takes on that block, but the presence of mind, again, to shuck him, get some separation to where he can go up and with those hands. If he's in there kind of booby bumping, bumping chest, you can't do it. You don't have any room. Nice strength and athleticism. Force a third and six. They can get a first down at the three-yard line. Not a clean exchange between Howell and Carter. And that brings up fourth down for North Carolina. Guy of Asuba, he about took the handoff. Just lit up from that defensive end spot. Came charging in there to disrupt. Watch him come from the right side of your screen. It's to the point, wow, a good job by Michael Carter to even hold on to the football and avoid disaster down close. And that's probably why there was just absolutely no question what's going on. Let's go kick it. We're lucky to still have the football. 25 yards away for Noah Ruggles. Six of eight on the season. And he chips that one through. And North Carolina gets points on a very long drive for North Carolina. Converted a fourth down, could not punch it in, and Ruggles has the field goal of 25 yards. There's, there's Robert Gillespie, that running back coach I was just talking about from Florida Gator, University of Tennessee, running back coach. Him up his back to look good on that drive. Now 15 plays on that drive for three points. It is now time to check in with the Aflac Duck for the Aflac trivia question and the quiz. Aflac. Thank you, Mr. Duck. And here is the question. Sam Howell, second all-time North Carolina high school career passing yards. Over 13,300. Who is first, James Bates? Well, I actually know this one. I know it. And, you know, for the, and I'm not good at trivia unless it's like old school rap or, or 80s uh, <laughs> sitcoms. But I know it. We'll see about that in the moments to come. We'll right. reveal the answer after the kick, the Aflac trivia quiz. Can I tell him now? How about now? I'm just excited that I finally know it. Please hold your responses until we... <laughs> Show the actual correct response to the question. How about now? Evans on the return. Stopped near the 20-yard line. 19 yards on the return. Time to answer the Aflac trivia quiz. Aflac. It is Chris Leak. Independence High School, is that right? That is correct. Charlotte? That is correct. CLT, there he is. Committed to Ron Zook. 15,593 passing yards. That high school had a winning streak of over 100 games, and Chris Leak went on to be a national champion in Florida. Be sure to test your knowledge again with our AFLAC trivia quiz next week. We look forward to that. Appalachian State up near the 30-yard line. Malik Williams, he's a junior from Chester, South Carolina. Dominique Ross, the senior, has the tackle at nine yards for Zach Thomas at App State. He's coming out firing. Again, first down and second down have been key to this offense having success on, on third downs. And it's been the reason why North Carolina's been so good on third downs. One of the best in the nation getting off the field, but it hasn't been the case so far today. Second and short for App State. Coming off of a bye week, they defeated Charlotte in their most recent game. 56-41, September 7th. And they're two and zero on the season. North Carolina's two and one. Their home victory came against Miami. That was September seventh as well. That's some blood. So umpire Jason Yates needs medical attention. Oh man! Taped up and ready to go. He get hit by. Ah, uh, he got probably the, the helmet, the snap on the helmet probably got him. Hold on the hand, just tape it up. Charlie Heck tried to tape it up for UNC last week and just couldn't go with that broken hand. Here's a second and short and a nice surge and pickup. Move those chains for App State. Dietrich Harrington, sophomore on the carry for 
the Mountaineers who converted to football bowl subdivision status in 2014, joining the Sun Belt Conference. And they've had great postseason success. Four bowls and four wins in a row. Champs in the Sun Belt the last three years. Out on the edge in Williams. Five yards on the play for the Mountaineers. Well, Hennigan's doing a nice job out there when they, they throw that, that little swing out there to go down and, and get a guy. And, and what's happening is these, these defensive backs for North Carolina, it becomes a one-on-one. -on -one. And if they can get Williams, they can get somebody to, to make someone miss, could be off to the races for a great big play. But just pitching and catching here and just chipping away. And again, time of possession has really been in favor of the Mountaineers here in this one so far. Thomas. Hennigan tried to make the circus catch on the sideline. And Dominique Ross was back there for North Carolina. And now it's third and five for Appalachian State. Approaching five minutes to go here in the second quarter. A sold out Keenan Memorial Stadium. Three of six on third down for App State. And leading by 10. A couple of TDs and a couple of field goals in the first half for the Mountaineers. A defensive fumble recovery return touchdown in the first quarter as well. That pocket collapses on Thomas. Has to run it and throw it up near midfield and complete. Malik Williams makes the catch at a first down Mountaineers. Storm duck on the tackle and a flag is out. 12 yards on that completion by Thomas. Guard, if it stands. Personal foul, targeting, defense, number 44. The previous play is under further review. 44 is Jeremiah Gimmel. They'll take a look at it up in the booth, and they can overrule it and keep him in the game here. Ah, well that's, that's not going to take much much look right there. That's a defenseless player. And it's forcible contact right to the head. He goes down. Ah, Gemmel's got to be smarter than that. The sophomore's done for the rest of this game. and It'll be just this game, but it doesn't take much. It's, it shouldn't take away from the, the play by Zach Thomas. It looked like he was going down. Pressure was there, rolled out, and found his guy. So an already banged up defense. Probably going to lose one more. It looks more violent in slow motion, but those are the rules. And, and can hurt it, it stands here. After review, the ruling of targeting is confirmed. Number 44 is disqualified. There will be a 15-yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down, Appalachian State. So Jason Autry confirms it. Gimmel is now disqualified, and Jonathan, Jonathan Smith will come in for Gimmel. The hit was on Malik Williams, who made his fifth catch of the game, and they tack on the 15 extra yards for the targeting, and Gimmel now is qualified and headed to the dressing room here for North Carolina. Terminology-wise, confirmed or overturned. It's no longer just stands. It's on that target, and when it comes going up top, and, it, and I really like that they go up top and take another look at it, because last year, quite a few guys Getting tossed and maybe shouldn't it. Thomas with the time and the throw into the end zone and incomplete. It looked like Hennigan was the closest receiver for Appalachian State. Morrison, Wolfolk, Dorn all back there defensively. A nice balance, nice rhythm to this offensive play calling by Eli Drinkwitz. Last time Eli Drinkwitz was in the house was last year when he was the offensive coordinator for SC State, and they won in overtime. You called that game against didn't you? North Carolina. Reggie Gillespie took it in the end zone for his fifth rushing touchdown of the game. So that was the last experience. Not necessarily on this field because it's a new synthetic turf, 
natural grass last year at the end of the season for North Carolina. Evans breaks through down the sideline. Evans right near the pylon and out of bounds just short of it. In fact, they may mark him up near the five. Well, you just mentioned Gillespie at NC State for Drinkwitz. Also, he had Samuels. He had Daisy. He had some good ones up at Boise State when he was there with the Broncos, too. Take a look at this guy who he says is the best he's been around. Puts his foot in the ground, runs behind those big blocks of the offensive line, and it's off to the races and almost beats everybody to the corner. Let's take a look now at that right side. Look at him pop up and move. The athleticism in the pop from the offensive line and then taking care of business with the speed is number three. 31 yards on that run for Evans. Gets swallowed up by a bunch of Carolina defenders. Tamari Fox making the play for his defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, along with Tommy Thigpen, co-defensive coordinators for North Carolina. Slight loss on the play for App State. A loss of three on that run by Evans, who does have the TD run for Coach Drinkwitz. Five yards earlier in this quarter. Second and goal. Thomas in space. Looking for that goal line, he gets hit short of it near the two. Got rocked by Trey Morrison, who blasted him, and Thomas upended. Nice job here defensively by UNC. This coming off the edge, that's Dorn. You got to keep him inside when you're that, that last guy on the edge and taking advantage of it, but unable to punch it into the end zone because a good job by Morrison. To upend them, and here's the third down and goal now. The football rests at the two-yard line of North Carolina. Tenth play of the drive for App State. They're going to pitch it out to Evans, and he walks into the end zone. Terrence and Evans, his second rushing touchdown of the game for the Mountaineers. Well, the folks who came down off the mountaintop, they're pretty fired up with what they're seeing from their Mountaineers right now. Long, sustained drive. Tapping it off with a good-looking touchdown running. An offensive lineman is really feeding right now. The big guys up front are getting after it. Mountaineers are playing the best football in Canaan Stadium in North Carolina. Up 27-10 after the TD from Evans. His second rushing touchdown of the game with 2.56 to go in this quarter. And he is our Hardys. Start to watch Darrington Evans, the junior from Oak Hill, Florida. As he should be. Went into that bye week as the FBS leader with 333 yards. And he's picked right up where he left off, averaging four. A pop in this game. And it has a lot to do with those big dogs up front. Hodges, Hunter, Hannon, Newsom, and Johnson. Offensive line that is really getting after it and wearing down on defensive front for North Carolina. 2.56 left in this first half. And Michael Carter and company need to get something going, but he won't get a chance, Michael Carter. Fair catch on the short kick. Garrett Walston, number 84 in Carolina Blue. Now remember, Tom, this is a UNC team that they've, they've really kind of buttered their bread this season anyway with those, those late fourth quarter long drives. Let's march it down the football field and come back. They come back against South Carolina in the opener. Mac Brown's first time back as the head coach with this true freshman quarterback. No problem. You get the win against South Carolina. They do it again against Miami. Almost did it against Wake Forest. Is, had nothing going in the first half, but the second half they played. They'd like for those fourth quarter heroics to start right now and put together a nice little drive and go get seven. Howell's pass. It was a catch in traffic from Daz Newsom, but a loss of three yards. James, you're right. Against Wake Forest, two 80-yard drives for touchdowns in the fourth quarter, but they came up short against Wake 24-18. You're kind of 
limited, though, in really what you can do. I'm not making excuses here at all, but offensive line-wise, they've got to, they've got to call plays to take care of an offensive line that's banged up, an offensive line that's having a trouble stopping these guys. So everything's got to be quick, and it kind of cuts the playbook in half. And then when you've got a defense flying around like that, it makes things really difficult. That's a completion past the 30. Deami Brown. Pass is complete to number two, Deami Brown. Deami Brown, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. First catch of the game for Deami Brown. He made perhaps one of the most spectacular catches of the early season against South Carolina in that far corner in the end zone in Charlotte. How about the timing there between Powell and Deami Brown? Again, even that is quick. Brown's first catch of the game went for seven yards. Howell in a cluttered pocket over the middle and complete right back to Deami Brown. And a first down up near the 45 and just short of it. Davis Gaither on the tackle and 12 yards on the connection. Plenty of time. Two timeouts for the heels. 145 left here in the first half. And Brown's starting to get active. Guy leads the team with 11 catches and the three touchdowns. Howell takes off. Tries the stiff arm on his way to midfield. Comes up short of it. Four yards on the run for Sam Howell. Jordan Fair, number 59 of the tackle of Howell. Freshman from Indian Trail, North Carolina, and Sun Valley High School. And if you saw our Aflac trivia question, you know that his numbers were just ridiculous in high school. Robust numbers. Over 13,000 passing yards. But this time he's going to run, hesitate, and get into App State territory. It's going to be very close to a first down. He needed to get a little bit inside of that 47-yard line. He got five yards. But now we're inside of a minute to play in the second quarter. Hey, if something works, come right back to it. He'll move the chains, it looks like, and give him the first, give him the first down. So first down yardage obtained. That clock's running, though. You gotta watch that clock today, Tar Heels. We all know the story. The end of that Deacon game. Howell's pass. Completed the 40. Move made by Tucker. And to the 30-yard line. Carl Tucker, the tight end, for 16 yards from Sam Howell. <laughs> Carl Tucker said, I didn't play in that Wake Forest game. And I'm not running out of bounds here. He slams on the brakes. How's this for athleticism, the big man? Cutting and bringing it back in, but that clock continues to tick. Two timeouts left, though, for Howell. Another pass for Howell, complete near the 15-yard line. Right on the numbers to Bo Corrales, who hangs on to the football after getting tackled by Sean Jolly. James, that's 20 yards for North Carolina and down to the 11. And, and, and Howell, whose coaches say never gets uncomfortable, when he's most comfortable is when he's just slinging it around here, almost slant, sandlot type ball. Just marching down the field like in those late game drives that we've seen so many times here early in his freshman year. So a timeout on the field with 13 seconds to go in this second quarter to Sam Howell. Put a little velocity on this last pass, James. Absolutely. Plenty of time, the protection up front. Just in the, in the middle of that zone. Just threads that needle. A nice throw and catch. Clock stop. Yeah. So it's App State that actually used the timeout there. Wow, helping that crown. And the heels out, but only 13 seconds remain. 246 career wins, 10th most in FBS history, and the most among active coaches in the football bowl subdivision, Mac Brown, with 13 seconds to go, and his freshman quarterback, Sam Howell, staring at that end zone and trailing 27-10 to the visiting Mountaineers of Appalachian State. From the 11, Howell with the time, sends it to the end zone, but it's well wide. Groves was back there with Desmond Franklin from App State. Best news about that is that it stops the clock with eight seconds to go in this quarter. And Phil Longo discussing the situation with his fellow assistants and head coach Mac Brown. Well, they need seven here. They need seven. Eight seconds. 
And it's, it's an offensive line that's done a much better job here on this drive. Everything's been a little bit faster, and they're wearing down. That defense has been out there now. It's not quite as fresh in getting after them. And here's where the rubber meets the road. Can they punch it in? Can they find a way? Howell backs up and tosses it. This is Carter. Has a block. Carter to the corner of the end zone. And he high steps his way in for the North Carolina touchdown. Nice job. Watch big 63, Montalus. He's going to get out there and lead the way. Gets the outside shoulder. Defensively, you can't let that happen. you got to fight to stay outside. Big 63 takes advantage of it. And to the house, Michael Carter, just the guy who I'd want the ball in his hands down low like that. Ruggles the extra point after the first rushing touchdown of the season for Michael Carter from 11 yards out. He finds the end zone for Carolina. Once again, the pass off to Michael Carter from Howell. One thing I have been impressed with is the athleticism of the offensive line. Guys that get up and they pull them a lot on in the run. Here they pull them and get them outside on this pass, swinging it out to Michael Carter. But a nice job by the freshman, Montalus from Apopka, Florida. Warren Sapp territory there, just north of Orlando. Guard for the Tar Heels. And how about it? Both these teams. <laughs> They're going to have one heck of a second half, that's for sure. Second passing TD of the game for Sam Howell. Michael Carter has his second touchdown reception of the season. And the lead is 10 for App State. On what should be the final play of this first half. And it will be. North Carolina able to score that TD in the closing moments of the second quarter. Michael Carter threw for 107 yards and two touchdowns in that first half, including the one in the closing moments of the second quarter to Michael Carter. Michael Rubino, graduate transfer from Appalachian State with a kickoff, and there will be no return. And if you're Eli Drinkwitz, I would imagine, despite the fact that North Carolina scored late, James, got to be pleased with the effort so far in this game. Yeah, absolutely. He, he was strictly business, though, talking with Lindsey Rowley. They're going into the halftime locker room. He knew exactly what his team had in front of him. You know, 0-0 is when it's very cliche what you tell your team, but it's true. You go out there, Appalachian State, and you win the second half, and you win this football game. And you've got 30 minutes of football left to play against a team that really not going to give up. You've seen that. Evans on the run for just a yard. He had two rushing touchdowns in the second quarter of five and two yards. And for Evans, TD's number five and six on the ground this season. This is after, against Charlotte, after the bye week, prior to it, Evans ran for 234 yards and three touchdowns. We talked about throughout the first half, the success on first and second down, helping on third down, but the Tar Heel defense Nice job shutting it down on the first play of the second half from scrimmage. Thomas looking right all the way, and this pass is incomplete near the 35-yard line. Malik Williams was the intended target. Incomplete. Greg Ross, number 10 back there for Carolina, and it's third and long. And this is exactly what Tar Heel Nation wants to see. Third and long situations. It's why they've been so successful on defense getting off the field. 27% opponents have been on third down coming into this game. But all kinds of success here early in this one. Five of eight for App State. Let's see what they can do here on third down and nine. Thomas's pass is caught by Sutton. He spun around at the 25. Sutton up near the 35-yard line. That's where he had to get to. And this could be very, very close as Aaron Crawford finally made the tackle of Sutton. He's got eight yards on the play. I'm not sure how he did it either, James. I'm not either. How's this for being rusty? Eli Drinkwitz said he hasn't played. He's, he's been rusty. Looks like they're, they're going to drop him right at the line of scrimmage. 
and he sure makes it interesting. Continues to fight all the way up about a couple inches shy. Wow. Some big plays in the first half. Big third down conversions for Sutton and almost has the biggest of the game right there. But instead, Carolina rallies and stands. Subach to punt for App State. Out of bounds in front of Newsom. So the Tar Heels going on offense and trailing by 10 after the punt of 44 yards. And Sam Howell will lead him out, the freshman. Here you see the first half possession. Sam Howell in his offense, they only needed one play for that first touchdown of the game after the great kickoff return of 75 yards by Michael Carter. But then it was the punt, the fumble. Another punt and that interception by the same guy who got that fumble for the touchdown, Demetrius Taylor. Howell. That pocket just falls in on Howell. Demetrius Taylor was first on the scene. Also 45 trade Cobb and a loss of nine yards. That's just when it looked like this offensive line was starting to gel. All kinds of confusion. Look at the, the stunts there in the middle and guys unable to pick up. And nine yard loss. First play from scrimmage in the second half for the Tar Heel offense. Powell's going to take off. George Blackstock came up to drop Howell after five yards on a rush. And now third and long for Phil Longo, offensive coordinator for North Carolina. Halftime adjustments. Ted Roof, defensive coordinator. It was that quarterback took it and go quickly that hurt him a couple times on that last drive. Here they do a better job with it. Howell sheds one man. Throws it up to the 30 to Corrales. They mark him at the 31. It looked like he got close, but not to the 32-yard line. 13 yards on the play. Cook had the pressure on Sam Howell. Still long there holding out there. Here's another look at it. How about Sam Howell? Oh, we've seen a little bit of drama here on third down. Both these teams did an excellent job of hanging off for dear life by Sean Jolly. You got to cover for a long time there when Sam Howell's making guys miss back there. Nice throw and catch, but still one yard shy. Yeah, don't let your guard down on either of these teams getting up close near midfield. And there's a timeout called. There's a flag on the field. It appeared that North Carolina was thinking about going for it on fourth and one. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. So the delay of game against North Carolina. And punter Ben Kiernan. He's got that Irish flag on his helmet. From Dublin, Ireland, and a freshman. His eyes are shy, are smiling, and Buck Wyland, the house of pain, is pumping, start jumping. I can't help it sometimes. <laughs> I just like the house of pain. He played high school football at nearby Wakefield High School. Got to the United States when he was 15 years old. Rugby player. That one checks up on North Carolina. Still rolling around. They're going to mark it near the 35 or so. That punt of 34 yards from Ben Kiernan. 17 with 11.18 to go in the third. Time for our Tweet of the Week. It's brought to you by Toyota. And it's from the App State Chancellor, Sherry Everts. Dr. Sherry Everts with the beat UNC sign on the Duck House in the middle of the pond on the Appalachian State campus in Boone, North Carolina, west of Chapel Hill. Beat UNC. Well, right now, that's exactly what's happening as we play early in the third. James, that's our Tweet of the Week, and it's brought to you by Toyota. Out on the edge, Hennigan fighting his way up past the 45-yard line. A hard-earned seven yards for Thomas Hennigan, the junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Well, hard-earned. I mean, and they're going to continue to fight. Both these teams are going to have to match blow for blow. But most importantly, hold on to that football. Williams into North Carolina territory and a first down. Marcus Williams, Jr., Five yards. Third back 
we've seen we've seen Harrington with a really high on behind Darrington Evans, and here comes Marcus Williams. Thomas floats it too high for his receiver Hennigan. Those two combined for a touchdown play in the first quarter of the win against Charlotte for Coach Drinkwitz, 56 to 41. Now they had 458 yards of total offense, but they gave up 526 against the Niners. Still won the game though and had the bye week last week. 2 and 0 for App State. Should have been an easy connect there, a little pitch and catch. Instead, just tried to force it and went high. Not the case right here. Nice job. Again, these receivers, I've really been impressed with the receivers. And so, of course, something's okay over there. But, but going in, in the, the sense of urgency to just go in there and pluck that ball. Hopefully, adjust your body. Maybe it's not a perfect throw. But watch something come back here. Go back and get it. We've seen it a couple times. That's a, that's a heck of a catch. And to get that foot down instead of third and ten, now you put that defense in a tough, tough spot. Let's see what Jay Bateman draws up as they still look at Corey Sutton over there on the sidelines. His teammates out there now looking at a third and four. Seventh catch of the game for Sutton on the previous play. Thomas over the middle and incomplete near the 30. Slipping through the hands of Jalen Virgil with Trey Morrison. Great call over him. Morrison right in the hip pocket. He's been active today. And just when I brag on those receivers, here's one that should have been caught. Goes up for it. And then able to pull it down. And that's a tough one. Good job by Morrison, though, right, out, right there on him. Get off the field defensively again. So Xavier Sabat, who did not see the field in the first half with his second punt of this quarter, is going to bounce and be downed right near the one-yard line. So Sabat with the punt, it took one bounce, and it was down by Mike Price right near the one. Now how about Price getting down there? I wasn't sure they were going to get their yeah. the St. Louis Rams. On that team to beat the Tennessee Titans. Well, how about this? Long way to go after that nice punt and pin. They're at the goal line. Worst starting position of the football game for North Carolina. Javante Williams trying to get some breathing room out beyond that goal line for five yards as Davis Gaither made the tackle. Good job of fighting and holding position, and also a good job of vision. Nice job there. Get a couple. Javante Williams. Looks like you're going to be stopped. Go get me a couple. Don't, don't get dropped for a loss of one or two. Go get me a couple. He gets five there to give him some breathing room off that goal line. Going to run it again. Got it up the middle near the 15-yard line and a first down. Javante Williams, 5'10", and 215 pounds on a sophomore. He got eight on the gallop. Speaking of vision, excellent job here. Just be patient. Let those blockers set up in front of you. Put your foot in the ground and go get it. Move those chains. Career high to open this season against the Gamecocks with 102 yards. 18 carries in that game. There's another hole. Past the 20. Fair has a tackle of Williams, eight yards. What Phil Longo eventually wants to do, he, he not, not quite the extreme of matching personnel with your system as we had last week because we had that Georgia Tech game and you've got Jeff Collins and company that go in there with a triple option bunch trying to change things around as injury there to Franklin. But it's, a, it's an air raid offense. It, it's a Mike Leach. It, it's, it's, it's what's going on at Oklahoma. It, it's Cliff Kingsbury type stuff. But with a little bit of a running game mixed in. Here they've got the running game, so they got to lean on it a little bit more to stick with it until they stop. On oh, second and two, it's a first down past the 30 for Williams. Nine yards on the run, Javante Williams. Good job. The offensive line is feeling it, man. They've had, had a tough go the last couple weeks. Got some so many injuries up there. They're starting to feed. They're starting to feel pretty good. Keep feeding. Ten carries for 58 yards, and he's trying to add to that total for Williams. 
Add five more on the play. He comes to the sideline and gets a breather. Go get him a breather. You got some good guys up there in the mix. And a nice job running hard, earning his keep. And so many times in college football, something's working and, and the play caller will just go away from it. Until they show me that they're going to stop it, just keep on ramming it down their throat and it opens up everything else. Howell lost the football. It's free at the 35. And North Carolina has successfully recovered. Demetrius Taylor knocked it free. He's done that a couple times today. A loss of three on the play, but covered by the Tar Heels. But Demetrius Taylor is having one heck of a football game. It's one thing to be a good football player, but to be a big playmaker, a guy that goes out there and make, just changes the game around, makes plays, Demetrius Taylor has been fantastic on that front. And the first one, the fumble, Sam Howell, hey, maybe didn't see it coming that time. When it gets traffic, you got to protect the football. Third and eight. This pass to Groves. They're going to mark him at the 44, and that should be a first down that it is. Octavius Groves on the catch. Remember yesterday, Tom, when Ted Bruce said, we've got to understand football situations. Well, there's a football situation. They need eight yards. They're going to run those routes at eight yards, and that's exactly what Groves does. He sets up shop right there, and Fair's just not right there waiting on him. Incomplete at the 45-yard line to Daz Newsom. Stops the clock with 6.53 to go in the third quarter. And North Carolina trailing by 10. Remember, this drive started inside their own two-yard line. Well, that's, that's what Mac Brown's teams have done so many times here in the second half. And you said it. I, I thought you were joking a little bit when we went to break. You said, well, they've got them right where they want them because they like those long drives. And right now, anyway, they're looking pretty good. But a second down and 10 here. Ninth play of the drive. Howell dumps it off. It is caught by Antonio Williams, diving into App State territory. Down at the 49 of the Mountaineers. Seven yards on the play. Earlier, we saw Dorn do a great job making up his mind, knifing through there, making a play. Here, the hesitation from Akeem Davis is really what makes this happen. He could have blown it up instead, makes it a third down and short. Nice play, though, by the back. They need three. Second effort after the initial contact by Williams. Needed to get to that 46-yard line. Antonio Williams delivering some punishment in that previous run. It is fourth down and short. North Carolina has converted its only other fourth down opportunity. It resulted in a field goal back in the first half on that particular drive. And now there's a stop in play with 6.18 to go in this quarter. And we're going to have a measurement. Oh, while they take a look at it, look at this collision here. Boom, going down low is fair. But getting even lower is Antonio Williams. Beating him right there in that hole for a big train that keeps those feet driving. I'm telling you, Robert Gillespie coaching him up there. Look at this. How many links is that? About nine or ten? Link shot. The contrast of these two coaches. Drinkwitz in his first year as a head coach. Mac Brown's first ever head coaching position came back in 1983 at Appalachian State. He stayed for one year. He went six and five on the mountain. Tucker, got the tight end in there, big 86. Big bodies, Williams, staying in there. Here's your big fourth down in inches. Turnovers on downs counts as well, but can they get it stuffed right here? App State, trying to bear down. It looks like enough. Williams ran into Davis, Gaither, and Huff. Very close. But it looks like he's close enough. Oh, he's got it. Yeah, to that inside of that 46. Right on the 46. 
First down. Visiting <laughs> fans don't like it, right? From up here, it looked like he had it by, by a couple feet. Good penetration in there, but, but going down low gives it back an opportunity to lunge forward. How about the fourth quarter that Antonio Williams had in the comeback win against the Gamecocks? Powell sprinting to his right, throwing on the run near the 30-yard line. And hold in. Diami Brown has the catch and a first down. 18 yards. Howell to Brown for North Carolina. Boy, it's, it's nice coverage here. Stride for stride. And the rip comes and tries to break through Sean Charles. But Diami Brown just wants it a little bit more. Strong using the body to wall him off. Goes up and pulls it down. A nice throw, too, by the way. Sam Howell on the move. Third catch of the game for Brown. This is a flip to Groves. The flag comes out. They ruled the pass play, but again, there is a flag at the end of the play. Fair had the tackle of Groves. Yeah, I think somebody tackled a defender, and this is going back the other way. Holding. Offense. Number 80. 10-yard penalty. Repeat. First down. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he actually tackled Demetrius Taylor, the big play maker. We're going to see. Well, I beg your pardon, that's 24. This tackle to Keem Davis Gaither. Nice play there by Fair as well to leap through and go shut it down. The injured player is Demetrius Taylor, number 48. As they attend to him, who's strength and conditioning coach in the locker room. Well, Coach Matt Brown says, what do you guys need? They said a new locker room, and they got that. And it looks just like Space Mountain, and that's a good thing. <laughs> and Magic Kingdom, man, that'll make you go play. Make me play in the new way. It's a nice, nice locker room. Beautiful. North Carolina will run it with Williams. Right side, up that sideline, trying to stay in bounds. And out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Huff forced him out, but 21 more yards. Javante Williams. Continue to fight. Again, vision. It's one thing to be able to see it. It's another thing to make it happen, to be athletic enough to hit the brakes and completely change gears, change direction. And that's just what Williams does right there. A nice job to get outside when there's nothing going on front side. Let it all collapse down in front of you. They did a good job on that right side of the offensive line to make it happen. Williams has been a key part of this drive for North Carolina. There is an Appalachian State player down. Ryan Huff is number 21. So we check in with Lindsay on the heat down of that field today, Lindsay. Thanks so much, Tom. It's definitely hot down here, especially in the sun, which if you take a look, App State sideline is still in the sun, whereas North Carolina side, there is a lot of shade. But speaking with Coach Drinkwitz yesterday, he said it's definitely a cause for concern. Their last two games have been about 10 degrees cooler than what they were going to face here today. He said most teams dread going down to Florida. They just dread coming down off the mountain. Not the big fans. I'm trying to keep him cool. North Carolina's in the red zone. The CPI security red zone. Two for two in the game with a touchdown and a field goal. And there's Williams again bouncing forward. Five more yards. How about the work by Javante Williams in this drive, which again started inside their own two-yard line for North Carolina with 4.30 to go in this quarter. Well, and Tom, it's, it, when a play's working, hey, keep it working. Keep going at it. And when a guy's working for you like that, when a guy is really feeling it like Javante Williams behind that offensive line, Jordan keep Fair comes him. out. Substitutions now, Appalachian State. Bird is in for Fair. And Demetrius Taylor, 48, is back in the game for Appalachian State. 15th play of the drive for North Carolina. Howell floats it to the end zone. And a touchdown. Carl Tucker has it for the Heels. The majority of that drive... You're just owning the ground game, pounding it, pounding it, pounding it. And it just sets this up. It just makes it so easy. Everything else just seems to work, especially, especially a play-action pass when you sell out. Nice play call by Longo. 
That is the third touchdown pass of the game for Sam Howell. This time he finds Carl Tucker, the senior, from Concord, North Carolina. Well, you, you, you can't stop that run, so what are you going to do? You're going to sell out everybody. I got to help out my guys. I got to shut down this ground attack. And then, oh, by the way, you can also throw with Carl Tucker, and it's just too easy for quarterback Sam Howell. This obviously isn't that air raid Mike Leach that, that eventually they, they plan on getting to. But you know what? With the personnel that you've got, with what's going on in the game, you've got to be able to adapt, and they, and they do that just right here. They do an excellent job. 57 of those 98 yards on the ground. Our five-star drive summary brought to you by Yellowwood. Carl Tucker finishes it off with the touchdown catch, and he only needed his left hand. Just stuck out the left hand, pulled it in. And in the end zone for the score. That's our Yellowwood five-star drive summary. Longest drive of the season for North Carolina of 98 yards in five minutes and 45 seconds. First TD catch of the season for Carl Tucker. But now Sam Howell has nine TD passes this year. Three in our game and one in each quarter. 27-24. North Carolina scored with a second to go in the second quarter. Michael Carter on a touchdown reception. And now Sam Howell has found the tight end, Carl Tucker, and it's 27-24. Late in the third, App State in North Carolina. How about this? Three-point difference, the momentum swing, and Eli Drinkwood's team to start this game. They get off the bus, and boom, it's seven to nothing. Everybody wanting to see him go down. The little brother, as, as I'm sure they feel like, as, as Carolina fans try, try to, hey, we're the brand of, of the state. We're, we are the marquee team in the state. But they didn't quit then. Let's see what they got right here. Open field tackle, Miles Dorn. Jalen Virgil made the catch. It's a loss on the play for App State. Nice job by Dorn again. You know, when you... When you go and you react, you break home the ball like that, you don't give these athletes a chance to get their feet set, get their shoulders square, and give you a shake. You just cut, cut their options in half, and you use, it, use your athleticism to just shut it down right now. Deep ball from Thomas there midfield. And adjusting to it and making the catch is Thomas Hennigan. Greg Ross was back there for the Tar Heels, but it's 29 yards. Well, Ross is right there with him. It's so hard to defend. Watch him stride for stride. He's just running with him. Watch those eyes. Those eyes get big, but you got to put the brakes too. It's a back shoulder throw. It's a beautiful throw and catch. Just the way they drew it up and the only place he could throw it. Otherwise, it's going to get picked off. So tough to defend, but... Do all you can to get back there and disrupt it. And how about that going up top and it's paying off for Zach Thomas and company here. Six catches, 90 yards for Hennigan. This one deep, middle of the field, in stride. And inside the five-yard line, Miller Williams. Back-to-back -back big pass plays from Appalachian State. And Dorn saved the TD. How about this Mountaineer bunch? Again, it looks like all the momentum belongs to the Tar Heels, and they just come right back down the field. Two quick strikes, and they're knocking on the door. Evans gets knocked down. The last two pass plays, 31 yards and 43 yards for Appalachian State. Second and goal. Well, this after North Carolina, James had scored 14 unanswered points across halftime. Gain on first down for App State. That's Evans to the goal line and in for the touchdown. The Mountaineers punch it in from three yards away. And back and forth we go. Wow. 
Again, it's, we talked about it being the difference in the first half, the two turnovers, the 14 points by Appalachian State off of those two turnovers. And the last 2-11 of this third quarter in the fourth quarter, you got to hold on to that football. And a good job by Evans knowing he's going into traffic there, covering it, and taking another look at it up in the booth. There the nose of the ball is over. This will probably be our best look at it. Look at the surge by the offensive line. Excellent job by the vets up front. And, and that's, that's pretty easy. There's, there's nothing there that, that can have you overturn it anyway. Saw those blocks from Cooper Hodges, 70 James, Bear Hunter, number 51 as well. Trying to create a path for Carrington Evans to his third rushing touchdown of the game if this scores. The ruling on the field was touchdown. And taking a look at it. Must have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. In the field stands. It was touchdown. There. Evans, third rushing touchdown. In his last two games, James, six rushing touchdowns. And App State is an extra point away from another 10-point lead. The same difference at halftime. And this is right after North Carolina had just scored on the previous possession. State right on through. Well, these teams, <laughs> I know they've got two more uh, times that they'll get together, but these teams need to get together every year. This is, this is fun to watch these two go at it. So many fun rivalries here in North Carolina. I mean, when you, when you throw Wake Forest, NC State, Duke into the mix, East Carolina as well, North Carolina and Appalachian State, some good football and some fun, exciting football. And you know all too well. You talked about the NC State game the end of last year right here. It's funny, James, because there is definitely a rivalry feel around this game, but this is just the second all-time meeting between the teams. They played exactly 79 years ago, 1940. North Carolina defeated App State in that one and only meeting, and it was here in Chapel Hill. In fact, App State was an NAIA school, part of the North State Conference, and North Carolina was in the Southern Conference at the time, which is the conference App State was in before it moved to the Sun Belt and to the Football Bowl subdivision. Did you get all that? Not really, because okay. I was paying attention to the kicker's beard. He looks like Yosef. Look at that. Is he the mascot Yosef. as well? The mascot Yosef. <laughs> you got to be able to be Yosef. For Appalachian State, what a drive. 75 yards to answer the score by Carl Tucker on the TD reception. This is Michael Carter. You know, we should have known, James, on the opening kickoff, we should have known when Michael Carter brought it back 75 yards. Here's our power play. It's brought to you by Honda Generators. Well, and it was power play after power play after power play. They had 98 yards to go to the other end zone, and they did just that, 57 of them. We're on the ground, and it sets up a play-action pass. An easy one like that for Sam Howell to his tight end, Carl Tucker. First TD grab of the season for Tucker, second catch of the year. And a one-handed catch in the end zone for the Tar Heels. Late in the play clock, late in the quarter for Sam Howell. Steps forward and throws. Corrales hurdles the 40 and up near the 45. Stephen Jones swept him down to the turf, but not before a 23-yard gain. There is a player down for Appalachian State. That is number three, Sean Jolly, after the Corrales catch. So with just inside of two minutes to go in this quarter, they have to take a look at Sean Jolly. The sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Well, and, and there you have it. Eli Drinkwitz was worried about this, and it certainly appears to be a cramp in the calf of Sean Jolly. And it's, it's different. You come down here off the mountaintop, and it's it's muggier, it's hot. And they felt it yesterday. And he, he voiced his concern in our meeting. He's up and off. But how about Sam Howell? No flinching, no cramping here. It stands in there strong. Good job, right up. Easy throw, easiest throw for a quarterback right over the middle of the field. You got to take it away. You can't let it be that easy for him. And a nice job to tuck it by Corrales. Was doing a good job here today. 
17 completions in the game for Howell. There's number 18 at the 45-yard line, and Groves stepped out of bounds at the 40. The 18 completions now for Howell. That's a season high, and they got 21 on that collaboration. Number seven to number four, Groves. Tip for Sam. <laughs> Appalachian State uses the the air last time they marched down the field to go score and quick to answer. Sam Howell and company trying to answer through the air as well and look pretty good through the air after the impressive ground game the last series. 210 yards through the air for Howell. Wants to uncork it to the end zone. Deami Brown looked like he got tangled up with a defender. And that was number 12, Stephen Jones. It was Brown running for that football. And Matt Brown not thrilled. Let's see here the end of it. Yeah. Certainly tangled up. Well, you know what? Again, that's a good no call. He, he's, he's going down. It looks like he trips. Incidental contact. contact. It's, it's nothing that comes up or by him. I, I don't know. If Tom's up here. He wants to fly. I'm not so sure. I just, it just looked to me like they, they got tangled a little bit. It was a close play. And on the next play, it's an interception. Akeem Davis Gaither. Second interception of the game for Sam Howell. Turnover of the game for North Carolina. And just watching those eyes. How about that for the field? Just talked about it over the middle of the field. How easy it is. You got to take it away for that quarterback. He sets up shop in that zone. Reads that quarterback's eyes. And you see him feel that receiver coming across the middle. You see him feel it. Watches those eyes of Hal. And boom. Goes and picks it. And there is that the big one. Is that the big turnover that we've talked about? Because it certainly looked like it turned into a back and forth swing. A lot of football to be played. But offensively, can they march it down again like they did the last couple times? Harrington carries for Appalachian State. He got four yards. Second pick thrown by Howell in this game. And not thrown one in the first two games of the season. They wanted that flag to play the front. If we get a chance here, let's go back and take one more look at it. Wins against South Carolina and Miami. A loss last Friday for North Carolina on the road at Wake Forest. Their first of the year after those dramatic wins against the Gamecocks and the Hurricanes. Harrington slipping down. No game. Stretching these plays. They've done good defensively. Here we go. One more look at it. Just watch the upper body. There, there's no contact upper body wise before he starts tripping. You know what I'm saying, Tom? One more time. Here go. As they go here, they're going third down, and they're going to go to the fourth quarter. But I don't know. I, I just, I just felt like, I just felt like he started going down to the turf before there was any contact upper body. So the final seconds are going to tick off in the third quarter. And Appalachian State will go to our final period with a 34-24 lead over North Carolina. North Carolina headed to the fourth quarter. And this is where North Carolina shines. Outscoring their opponents in the fourth by 29 points. One of the best in all the country. Third, and they were bottom of the barrel last year when it came to fourth quarter points. Minus 72. How's that for a flip? They got to stop them here, though. Thomas decides otherwise. Jazz Surratt came up for the pressure. That is fourth down. <laughs> well, the former quarterback, he knew exactly what to do. He was looking to take someone's hat off, and here's Fox down. That's Tamari Fox. So they'll take a look at Tamari Fox, the freshman, with the 10. It's fourth down for App State early in the fourth. Chaz Surratt, part of that last defensive play for North Carolina. Lindsey has more. 
That's right, Tom. It wasn't long since Chaz Surratt was taking snaps as a quarterback, but he made that transition to linebacker. I asked him about it earlier this week. He said he had to completely change the way he approached football. He had to gain a bunch of weight. He said he also had to run a lot more. He explained to me that his body was more important as a linebacker. Chaz said when he was transitioning, he would eat five or six meals a day, a lot of steak, chicken, pasta every day. He said he's not a big eater, but he had to force himself to eat even if he wasn't full. I also spoke with Sam Howe, and he said he has so much respect for Chaz because he feels that's something that he could never do. Lindsay, how about the laugh that we got out of Sam Howell yesterday when we asked him if he could make the change from quarterback to, to linebacker? He That's said, right. no way. That's exactly what he said. He said, there is no way. He had big eyes, and, and you could tell that he has a lot of respect for Chaz. Savage so is back to punt. Number 39 for Appalachian State. Das Newsom is deep. Good stand by the defense of the heels after the turnover. Daz wants a return. Running down that 20-yard line. Stiff arm and around the corner and out of bounds. They'll give him the 26-yard line. The punt was 51. The return was 5. Excellent job by 24 North Carolina. Let me make sure that's Antoine Williams. It might, it might be Asante. And, and what normally would be a blindside block, you're going to see it right here. You see him just kind of run, run the the punt cover guy, run him out of there instead of take the big hit like we used to see. It's a point of emphasis in college football here this year is that blindside block. And, and a lot of times it happens right there. It's good coaching and it's a good job to pull up and not draw a 15-yard penalty and hurt your team. And you're starting right there at the 25-26 instead of deep down by the 10. Big on first down. Make sure they don't get that train rolling again. And they're waiting. And a good job, a good lead by Fair that time. And you see those big bodies, those offensive linemen get up and pull. They're pulling for a reason. You got to get there and set that edge. He does just that to shut down the offense. And Javante Williams. Second and ten and incomplete. Here's the same look, but a play action pass. So you, and, and you had an open receiver. You had guys reacting to that run one more time, trying to pin their ears back and go make a stop for no gain again. But it's a drop ball. Got to hang on to those. Three of 11. That's not going to win you football games. Got to convert on third down. They got to find a way to stay out there right now. But they need 10. Situational football. Where are those sticks? Where are they trying to get? Where are they running those routes? Howell on the run, throws across his body at the 40 and caught Bo Corrales at the 39-yard line after a 13-yard pickup. First down, North Carolina and Bo Corrales. Boy, Hal getting creative. He's, he's forced to roll and buy some time. And Corral is doing an excellent job of moving for his quarterback. Two guys on the same page, setting up shop in the middle of the field. First down, North Carolina. Five catches for 79 yards for Corrales, and now he's got another catch. That's number six, four more yards. Bo Corrales Jr. from Georgetown, Texas. 6'4 and 210. This is right here in, in Matt Brown's freshman quarterback in his wheelhouse. He, he kind of likes it when it's all on the line as so far this season. And these fourth quarter drives, long drives, just chipping away here. Javante Williams. Just two for Williams. Fair and Sperlin on the tackle, Appalachian State. One more big third down now after the big conversion on third down and ten. This one a little bit easier on Phil Longo with his play calls. He's got the advantage on third down and four. There are a lot of things you can do. Get those defensive coordinators, Ted Roof in this case, guessing. Michael Carter is the back. Flags are out. There's three of them. Ball start. Offense. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Remains third down. 74 is Jordan Tucker. Sophomore. Roswell, Georgia. Crusher. Third down and four. 
Now you're looking at third down and nine. Now it's advantage, Ted Roof. Oh, just a couple of those along with the snap infractions against Wake Forest and they can't afford them. Now you've got guys walked up here showing blitz. Fair and company in the middle. Here they come. On third down, Howell trying to run for it near midfield and he's got it. A major collision at midfield, but enough for a first down for Sam Howell. <laughs> Game on the line. Nobody trying to slide up in here. All the way as far as he can go to get that first down and then some. A great job by Howe. The blitz, you got to keep the pressure up the middle. It came from the edges. He saw the hole there like we saw a couple times in that late drive in the first half. Does an excellent job of seeing his guys covered. On the beautiful North Carolina campus, we saw Trey Cobb was down, number 45 for App State. He was taken to the sidelines. And DeMarco Jackson has come in in his place, number 52. Sam Howell at quarterback for North Carolina and trailing by 10 inside of 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Howell just ran for the first down. For him, this one off to Michael Carter. There is no game. James, we talked about this game prior to it. We thought it would be tough, rugged spirited, emotional. We've seen all those things. All of the above. And, you know, as we went to break there, the uh, the Tar Heel band uh, struck up, don't stop believing. And, and that's one thing for sure. Mac Brown, uh, he's he's got some believers out there on the field, and they've never panicked this year being down in the fourth quarter. Every game they've trailed in the fourth quarter. So this isn't panic time by any stretch. But down 10 points here with 11 minutes to go. They've got to keep marching forward and hold on to that rock. Fourth quarter comeback wins for North Carolina this season against Miami and South Carolina. Carter got one before he was upended by Jordan Fair. Hakeem Davis Gaither in there as well. And back-to-back -back plays on the ground. Phil Longo, Robert Gillespie, Coach Matt Brown trying to draw something up here on one more third down and long. Five to 13. Howell in the heels. They're so far in this game. Last time on third and long, it was Howell who ran for it to get that first down. Wants to throw this time. It is deflected and out of bounds. It was tipped by Nicholas Ross. About the job that Ross does to get there in just the last second. Get up there and get that paw on it. It's almost like, like watching a great outfielder, you know, run, run, run last second because he's got to use those arms and then just stretch out. Otherwise, that ball's right on the money. Great job to recover there by Ross and to knock it down and force a punt here from midfield. It was good blocking by that offensive line. Plenty of time for Howe. All needed a little bit of air, and here's a timeout. Appalachian State has taken its first time out of the second half. They've got the lead, 34 to 24. The bomb squad here in Chapel Hill are the kickers, punters, and snappers. It's uh, we're a unique group. We know our role here. We uh, we love to we bring the energy every day. We just love the team and love playing the game of football. Since I've been here, the bomb squad has just been a loved group. We uh, every day we show up in the weight room and the field. It's, uh, we bring a different energy. Uh, we just love pumping on the teammate or pumping up our teammates uh, throughout practice and on game day. All right, say goodbye on one. Just set hut. Goodbye. Thanks for talking. <laughs> Thanks for talking you, Trevor Collins. All right, so, but it's, it's unique here. It's a long snapper out there right now, but it's Drew Little. Two different long snappers. Little does the punch. Trevor Collins on the PATs and field goal. Uh, long snapper appreciation tour continues. It's kind of fun to get to know those guys. And after the fair catch by Hennigan, next week we're going to Pittsburgh for Delaware and Pittsburgh. 36 yards on the punt by Kiernan. Nice job by Kiernan, who's, who's got a big, strong leg, and you've seen him a few times. <laughs> just go ahead and just boot it and let it go into the end zone. Here you pin him. Give him a long ways to go. Appalachian State for the football. And leading by 10. In the first half, they scored 20 unanswered. North Carolina responded with 14 unanswered. But James, those 14 points off of Carolina turnovers as well. Absolutely. Look at the big plays, the explosive plays throughout the year. Plays over 20. 
for Carolina, but there's a nice one, right? First play of this drive. And boy, Evans letting them know it over on the Carolina sidelines. First down pickup. And Mark says, here's why Eli Drinkwitz you know, speaks so highly of this guy. You see him, the jump cut, and as soon as he gets that ball, he sees it, busts it outside, and nobody can catch him until the damage is done. And it's a fresh set of downs. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Evans put the head down right into the line. He's got three yards. He has three rushing touchdowns in this game to match a career high. Also had three in the win against Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. And he ran for 234 yards in total against the Niners. Who's going to make the big play here defensively? Miles Wolfel, South Carolina, week one. Two big fourth quarter interceptions. They need that rock back. Who's going to make the big play here against App State? Get it back in the hands of the offense. There he is over on the sidelines right now. Wolfman can't help him much right now, but he needs his guys out there on defense to be some playmakers. Not a lot for Evans. No game. A touchdown for each team in this second half. That represents the scoring. After Appalachian State led it 27-17 at halftime. And now it's third down. Jay Bateman's defense trying to respond to App State, which is 5 of 11 on third down in our contest. Third down and long. Bateman trying to, trying to change some, trying to get somebody out personnel-wise, and he will get off the field. And now finally lined up. Uh-oh. Up the middle, first down and more, past the 40, Darrington Evans. App State had missed on their last three chances on third down, but not this time, it's 18 yards. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's a personnel, you got too many guys out there to begin with, and then you have guys in the wrong position, not set, taking advantage of it. That big offensive line, just too easy for them, and Darrington Evans, and it's another first down for Appalachian State. Wow. 16 carries, 71 yards, and those three scores of 5, 2, and 3 yards for Darrington Evans. Marcus Williams Jr. gets the call. Runs into Aaron Crawford, number 92 in Carolina Blue. The graduate student, 6'2", and 290. to play a lot of snaps in these games early on. Yeah, be in good shape, those big men. Still going strong right here in the middle. Now seven and a half minutes to go in regulation. App State, 7, 32, and 1 against the ACC, and all seven wins have come against Wake Forest. Williams Jr. on the carry. In fact, Wake was the last ACC opponent for App State as they fight at the end of that play. Back in 2017, Wake beat him 20 to 19. And James, I think you brought up an interesting point at the beginning of our game. Since the win in 07 against Michigan, App State has played 11 Power 5 teams and lost all of those games as we play today. Right, and I mean, they've played, I believe, the last four FBS teams, the three of them they've taken to the wire, but they haven't been able to take that step and go beat them. And, and that's not to take anything away from what they've done. 2014, they come into the FBS, won four straight bowls. Oh boy, if they could pull it off here today, it'd be pretty big for this program. There's a huge play. Speaking of big, nice play in the backfield to drop it, and that'll do it and force a punt. Excellent job by Dominique Ross to get him down to the ground. He's made a few big plays here in this one here today. This goes untouched, runs right by the offensive line. It looked like Newsom. Get off the field. It's been going to six minutes now. Gives him a chance. So Groves is the deep man. Sabach the punt. 
To your point, James, the last Power 5 opponent was last season for App State. September 1st, they lost at Penn State, but in overtime, 45-38. to 38. And then Eli Drinkwitz took over the program this year after Scott Satterfield moved on to Louisville. So the delay of game against App State, perhaps more strategic than anything else. Last I checked, Satterfield and Louisville Cardinals were trailing Florida State, but I think I think Louisville, and as App State fans know, it was, Louisville's going to be in good hands with Coach. From the update desk, 24-21 Louisville. Ooh. That's in the fourth. Ooh. That punt is going to bounce into the end zone from Savach, mm. the Australian punter. Punt for 58 yards, but into the end zone for Savach. Well, they pinned him last time, but a little bit too strong here this time. Now, you, you don't quite have the luxury of, of just a complete, just let's just march it down, down the field with run after run after run. But at the same time, with North Carolina, if you got three timeouts remaining, you don't have to go just to the air. You just you can you can mix it up a little bit, especially when you can get it working. But at the same time, you've got to be very aware of that clock. From the 20 for Sam Howell. Looking to throw. Open man. 32-yard line. And getting away is Newsom. A first down for the Tar Heels. Well, that, that midfield range, they're doing a good job of just setting it down behind in that zone behind that that initial layer and Sam Howell now is getting a little bit of protection and getting it to him. Howell. Newsom. Back-to-back -back first downs and he fights his way to midfield. Daz Newsom consecutive catches and this time he's got 15 yards on the 22nd completion of the game for Howell. So many of those medium range balls have, have really been uncontested. This one, that's not the case. Fair's right there. He throws it, just threads the needle, does an excellent job, a great throw and catch. And Newsom doing a great job after he catches it. He's banged up a little bit as they tend to him on the sidelines. Third straight completion at the 45-yard line. It's Tucker absorbing contact and going out of bounds inside the 45. And he got seven. And there is a flag out. A late flag on the play after the catch by Carl Tucker. Play. Personal foul. Defense, number 24. 15-yard <laughs> penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic first down. Well, the, the flag came down, and the entire bench, with the exception of Mac Brown, look at my, it's almost like a my bet. Everybody cheered, except for Mac Brown. He got upset. He might, might have been looking at it backwards, and here's a, here's a look at that late hit. Oh, I see. Well, that's what he was looking at. He thought that flag was on his guy that came flying him down. It was, I think, Javante Williams. It goes against App State. Howell. Williams. A blocker or two. And out at the 21-yard line. And the clock will stop. They got eight yards on the play. What? Watch Rontavius Groves, number four. Watch him hit. Fights, fights, fights. Does all he can to keep Fair out of the picture. Just long enough for Williams to get past an excellent job by Toe Groves. Howell throws it down near the 10. Diami Brown. And he steps out at the 10-yard line. 11 yards on the play. And, 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 you know, again, Coach Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator, was talking about it yesterday. Just cool as can be, Sam Hill. This kid is a true freshman. And he just is not too high, not too low. When, when things are going well, he's not too, too high up there. Things are going bad. He doesn't get down. Consistent. Just marching him down. Now to go back to the ground here for a couple. We're inside of four minutes to go in regulation. Drive started at their own 20. I'd like to see a little bit more of a sense of urgency now. This is Groves running mm. and coming up short of the goal line. Clock will continue to move as Caden Smith made the tackle down near the two-yard line. 
320 and counting. Uh, you got to get over the ball. It's, you've got three timeouts left, but it's now you're getting to a situation. You need two scores. There's a lot of time that's ticking off this clock. Third and goal, James. Howell grab that snap, and he runs it in for the touchdown. The snap was not perfect, but Howell slams it in from two yards away. Touchdown, Heels. Great job by Howell. Presence of mind, not only to go up and get it. Now, you know what? Play's busted. Let me make something happen. That could have been disastrous. Good job by the freshman. Again, cool and calm. Hey, you don't panic. Ball's over my head. We barely got it. No panic. Touchdown. Now the first rushing touchdown of the season for Sam Howell. Ruggles makes it a three-point game. North Carolina at Mack Brown marches that football 80 yards for the score. Job going up. Getting it, and a good job by the guys up front for clearing the way. Whatever the play was supposed to be, it's not how they drew it up, but they'll take it. Up. North Carolina has just scored on a short yardage run from Sam Howell, his first rushing TD of the season. It's a three-point game, and it's our Toyota. Let's go places. Well, Sam Howell doing what he's supposed to do here, Tom. They got a little jump around going, and there's some juice in the building right now, but... Still down three points, but that was an impressive drive. And then capped off with the snap a little bit off. Howell goes up and gets it, punches it in. They cut the lead to three. That's our Toyota. Let's go places. Three minutes, one second to go in the fourth. So Sam Howell now responsible for four touchdowns. Three through the air in the throw game. One rushing, 25 completions, 282 yards, and three TDs. And they're all season highs for the freshman Sam Howell. That's a fair catch made by Evans beyond the 20-yard line. Safe play with 2.59 to go. James, this is what North Carolina is in the business of. Dramatic finishes <laughs> in games. And here we go again. Mac Brown, Eli Drinkwitz. Absolutely. But the one thing that Drinkwitz Bunch has done is answered. Whenever you think, oh gosh, all the momentum belongs to the home team, they've answered. Can they answer now? Five of eight, the Mountaineer offense on third downs in the first half. Since then, one of the last five. The defense has turned it around. Can they do it one more time? Here are three timeouts remaining. 2.59 left to play. Harrington. Solid first down gain of five. Absolutely, Tony. That's well, you got to stiffen up a little bit more than that. He's the biggest surprise, Eli Drinkwitz, as they call the timeout here. Make sure they stop that clock with 2:54. Matt Brown and company. But well, Eli Drinkwitz, when asked about Chop Harrington, he says he's been the big surprise this season. Tore his ACL a couple springs ago, and now the sophomore back out there, and they put the ball in his hands. He's really all on the line. And, James with four second down. It's a quick word from Advanced Auto Parts. I can find 12 autographs in six seconds. So reminding you to check your battery this fast, easy. It, you know, it, it, you say oh, on the line, on the line. Think about what's on the line right here in this football game. Think about what's on like 40 years, 40 years since they last played, only played one time. It's about 79 years to the day. And 1940, the last meeting. The incredible symmetry of this game, boiling down to the last few minutes of this quarter. Mac Brown in 1983 had his first head coaching job at Appalachian State. Since that time, two tours with North Carolina. First year of the second one this season. A national championship in Texas. Two trips to the title game in college football as the head coach of Texas. Across the way, Eli Drinkwitz in his first season as the head coach at App State. And again, 79 years to the day they meet for just the second time. 
So burning those timeouts, that's what Eli Drinkwitz in this App State offense does by keeping it on the ground. How's this for a third down? One for their last five. They need five. Making some noise here in Keenan. They need the 35-yard line to keep it alive. Thomas has room. First down to the right side, and he slides down. Up at the 42-yard line, Ross couldn't catch him 12 yards. Zach Thomas on the scamper. Great play call. They sell out trying to shut him down inside. And how about the job by 88? Pearson on the outside. He seals that edge. And Zach Thomas, presence of mind to keep that clock alive, keep it going by sliding before he goes out of bounds. What a huge play. Offensive coordinator and head coach Eli Drinkwitz dialing it up right there. Big time play. App State has not defeated an ACC opponent since 2000 when they won at Wake Forest. 20 to 16. Harrington. One timeout for North Carolina. 2.11 to go. And they've taken that timeout. Mac Brown told us, James. He was out for a few years, got to study other teams, work in television for a little while. But the competitive spirit never left. And with a chance to come back to North Carolina, this was the only destination. And now they're trying for another dramatic finish, although the clock is their enemy at the moment. App State has the football. Yeah, the only other option from his wife Sally was the Bahamas, and they don't have a football team down there, so you're right. It pretty much was the only destination. The only place they could come, and here they are home right now. And boy, they're looking for a Chapel Hill miracle. Try to get this football back. They're going to have a little bit of time if they can stop them. But not much. Game there. Evans is the back to the left of Thomas. Right at midfield. That's going to bring up third and two after seven yards from Darrington Evans. Dorn and Morrison on the tackle. And there you go. And remember, you got to factor in that, that play clock as well. You would best believe that Zach Thomas, as he goes over to the sidelines to get his play from Eli Drinkwitz, is going to let it tick down as far as they possibly can go. Can they go two yards? If they can go two yards, that'll do it. Who wants it more right here, Tom? It looks like North Carolina wants it just a little bit more. No gain on the play for Evans. And fourth down for the Mountaineers. Excellent job. Look, look at the hats, the blue hats. They take the punch to App State, and a nice job there in the middle. Aaron Crawford, who again has been asked to play so many plays right there in the middle. You see him in these games late against Miami and just looks like he's gassed playing 60 some odd plays. He's getting it done here on third down. They'll let this one tick down as far as they can before calling a timeout. We have about 40 seconds remaining in the game. So the North Carolina defense holding strong on third and short. We don't even use that timeout. At midfield, and it should be fourth and about two. Oh, they'll punt it away. So now fourth and seven after the penalty. They're stepping it off right now back to the 45. And once 
once again, North Carolina coming down to the last possession of the game. Remember, against Wake Forest, Michael Carter stepped out of bounds with what they thought was one second left. That final play was not granted to Matt Brown and the Tar Heels, and they lost that game against Wake 24-18 in a non-conference game against Wake. That was last Friday. With the exception of that opening kickoff, there will not be a 10-second runoff. The clock will start on the snap. That, of course, Mac Brown's option. And, of course, they don't want it. But with the exception of that opening kickoff, this Mountaineer special teams unit has done a good job on punt cover and on kick cover. They got to do it one more time now. Shabbat's got it away. Block was on. It's going to hit at the four and bounce into the end zone. Exactly 30 seconds to go as Sabat sent that one to the end zone. So North Carolina down by three. No timeouts left. Sabat helps him out a little bit by getting it into the paint. Nice long boot, but a little bit too long as it'll come back out to the 20-yard line. The block was on for North Carolina, so a good job of picking it up and protecting that punter by Appalachian State. 30 seconds left to go. North Carolina had a TD in their last possession on a Howell run. Trying to get in field goal range at the very least as that one is wide of the intended target. Daz Newsom was the receiver in the vicinity. Second and ten. Mountaineers only brought three there. All those numbers you saw for Sam Howell, season highs for the freshman from Indian Trail, North Carolina, and Sun Valley High School. More drama for the Tar Heels. Yes, sir. Fourth straight game. If they only bring three again, you, you, you can't have your quarterback rushed. Here it comes again. Give them time. Step there up. You go. Complete beyond the 35-yard line, Daz Newsome. Got to go, though. Middle of the field. You got to go. Here the clock will stop to reset, but then it's going to get going. Nice job. Nice job, North Carolina, over the ball. Kill it. Excellent job. 17 yards on the previous play to Newsom. And they stop the clock with 19 seconds left. Well, the fourth quarter heroics, they just keep on coming. Incredible. <laughs> there are the drama so far anyway. Don't you, I guess you don't call them heroics until it's, it's actually capped off. And you got a long way to go in 19 seconds, yep. but still. It happened against Miami and South Carolina. Came up just a little bit short against Wake. Howell, pressured, gets away and throws. And it's into the North Carolina bench. It went out of 13 seconds to go. Corrales was closest. Well, it, it, this offensive line, when you've got three guys coming and you've got five to block them, figure out how to keep them off the lap of your quarterback. Give them some time. Give them a chance. Be careful, Appalachian State. Don't give him a freebie with a big penalty. There you go. Deep ball. Caught. Trying to get out of bounds. Inside the 40 was Daz Newsom. And it stops the clock with five seconds to go. Excellent job by Newsom. Get out of bounds right away. No hesitation. Stop the clock. But it's going to be tough. You, you've, get, you've got a chance for one play, and you either go to the end zone or you're going to have to try a long, long field goal. So they are going to try the field goal as Noah Ruggles comes out. He hit his career long at Wake Forest last Friday of 49 yards. This is going to be from 56. And before he can attempt it, Appalachian State has called a timeout. James, for the second straight week, our broadcasts are going right down to the final plays. Last week, we saw the Citadel connect on an overtime field goal to beat Georgia Tech. And today, it's Appalachian State and North Carolina down to the final five seconds of the contest. Well, and, I, and I think they, they might have gotten, gotten an eight there from the Mountaineer sidelines that the play clock was ticking down. Timeout called by Eli.
by Drinkwitz. So here we go. Ruggles, 6 of 8 on the season. Again, that long of 49 against Wake in their most recent game. From 56 yards away, it's Noah Ruggles, the sophomore, to tie this game for the Tar Heels. It got deflected and blocked. And on the final play of the game, Appalachian State has defeated North